Welcome to the Savage Productions YouTube channel. Hey, welcome back to the channel today. Um, today I'm actually going to go over a, a small block forward that we're building for a customer. It's a 1978 uh, 351 Windsor. It come out of a, it's actually an original motor, come out of a 1978 Ford F100 short bed step side and it's a Ranger edition they call it. The truck is in really nice shape. Um, it's, uh, he actually bought it about two months ago to pretty much uh, kind of restore it, um, kind of back to original. Um, the engine is going to be a little bit spicy so it's, it's going to make about 600 horse and um, it's still going to be fully streetable. It's going to come in at about just under 11 to 1 compression um, we're doing a set of 210 um, cc heads, they're CNC ported with a 208, 208 intake valve and they're from Probax Performance. Uh, it's a local company, um, well I shouldn't say local, but they're out of uh, southern states, they're Alabama uh, or Georgia, I'm not sure which, but really good company. They make these heads um, in-house, custom order, and they're really good heads for the money can't beat them, they make a lot of power. So uh, just going to go over a few things. I went ahead, uh, all the machine work has been completed. We did a full race prep block with a, uh, a Canton stud girdle for the mains. We're doing a Canton oil pan. Uh, a, of course the ARP bolts comes with the, the main cap support. We're doing um, ARP head bolts, uh, comp cams. It's going to make power to about 6200. 6300. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a good streetable combo. It's going to be carbureted, uh, 750 double pumper. Uh, so I'll have to show you once we get this build going, I'll show you some of the parts. They're really, really, it's really going to be a nice looking build. So right now I'm going to just show you the, the, the motor. I got it all cleaned up and painted, got the timing cover painted. Um, it really, if you want to really make the the motor look nice, you know, it takes a little bit of time to prep it and tape everything off just like if you was doing paint and body on a car. Of course the machine work, um, the, the block was hot tanked so that helps a lot but um, I had to do a little clearancing in the, the bottom of the cylinder walls for the stroker kit that we're running. This uh, particular setup is, um, we spec'd it out for the customer, it's our SP408 cubic inch package. Um, 408 stroker out of a 351 Windsor. So, you know, these blocks will hold about 750 to 800, and um, we're going to be making somewhere around 600. And then in the future, he wants to put a supercharger on it, so um, we can make about 750 to 800. He doesn't want something too crazy, but obviously, 750 to 800 horsepower is going to be plenty for that truck. I want to flip the camera around and show you the engine, show you what we got going on. So, yep, so this is the block. Um, really came out nice. This, this engine was really nasty. It had a lot of buildup inside the engine. Originally, we were going to just do a top end kit, a trick flow top end kit with a cam, um, intake, carburetor. And when we pulled the heads off, we seen there was a lot of wear on the cylinder walls. And the whole valley had about two inches of buildup with uh, you know gunk and stuff built into the um, on the oil valley it was in the, it was the top of the cylinder heads it was in the oil pan just probably years of maybe not changing the oil um, regularly but uh, I know the PCV valve was totally clogged up so that has a lot to do with it the crankcase crankcase can't be breathing properly so that'll cause it but um, but it really turned out nice. I'm gonna, I already went ahead and put in a couple freeze plugs. I got the block, got the block all painted up here. Let me flip this around so you can see it. So um, basically I taped off the, the deck where the cylinder heads go, taped it off real nice. I put the old oil pan on to keep the paint from getting in there. Uh, the timing cover, I cleaned it up real good and I put it on and painted it at the same time. 
So here's the uh, a timing cover. And it is going to have a mechanical fuel pump right there. We got a, you know, a pretty decent fuel pump that's going to be supporting enough power for this thing. I'm going to go ahead and use the stock dipstick, the oil dipstick. Um, the, we're using a Canton oil pan for this and it does have a revision for um, a dipstick on the oil pan but since this is a front sump we can actually use the stock one here so we're going to do that uh, but yeah it's going to be really nice this whole build is going to be sweet man I mean we got a lot of uh, high dollar parts going on it and it's it's not he not only wants it to run good but he wants it to look good and, and it's probably going to look uh, amazing um, with all the parts that we got so I've already did the clearancing on the block um, didn't have to do a whole lot with the rods and and the um, the bolts you can't really see there but just a little bit only had to do a little clearancing on each cylinder we had uh, plenty of rotation you want to have at least sixty thousandths between any rotating parts and we ended up with about eighty to a hundred by doing that actually probably 80 or I think we had about 80 without touching some of them so obviously we got plenty now um, I went ahead and put the main bearings in the caps the stud girdle or the main support girdle let's see it's actually right over here I went ahead and just took it off we had this block line board we had the decks shaved a little bit um, we want to achieve close to 11 to 1 compression and we're using a 64 cc combustion chamber on the head and with the pistons that we chose um, we're going to be right around 11 to 1 that's what we're shooting for so anyway I went ahead and checked the bearing clearances with the caps on torqued down with the main support in place we came out with um, right on the right on the money as far as the oil clearance that we want for this motor I went ahead and checked the rods um, as far as the bearing clearance on that and they came in right on the money too. Let me uncover here and I'll show you the pistons. I've already got the pistons on the rods. It's really a nice set. Um, so we use a, an Eagle rotating assembly, H-beam rods. These are really a nice piece. Um, standard ARP rod bolts and these pistons are really nice we did have to go with a little bit of a dish piston with this stroke piston size um, pretty much everything came in right under 11 to 1 with these pistons if we would have went with a uh, you know a flat top it would have took us it would have took us too high we'd have been in a 12 12 to 1 compression or higher and we didn't want that so these are pretty sweet let me show you the that's the part number of the pistons I think you can see in there but uh, but yeah it's pretty nice man um, like I say the I got the already got the bearings in the uh, all the rod bearings checked out good with the with the journals on the crank so we're all good to really assemble this thing all I gotta do I, I went ahead and gap the rings too put cover these back up all the rings are gapped I did gap them for a little nitrous or uh, boost because um, like I say he's planning on putting some boost to it later so uh, probably it might even be doing it this winter actually um, put a supercharger on it but I did gap the rings for that so we're going to be good there and uh, yeah I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these freeze plugs in go to kind of show you how we do it pretty simple I'm sure you guys have probably done this before but I like using the, the brass ones I just think they look nice uh, especially against a painted block I've already got two of them set in there so what you want to do when you do these freeze plugs um, it's better to kind of sand them just a little bit around the edge with a, a very light emery cloth 
that just puts a little bit of scratches on it. Not bad at all, just a little bit. And then I put some of this on there, just a very little bit. It's the Forma Gasket, Permatex Forma Gasket. It's hard setting, fast drying. This stuff is uh, pretty much recommended for freeze plugs. So you don't have to do them. I've done many motors in the in the past without doing them, but uh, I just uh, I find it's just a little little extra um, precaution. So um, you just smear a little bit of that on there and let it sit for just a few minutes to start drying up, getting a little tacky, and then you tap them in. So I'm going to go ahead and put the camera back on the, the tripod here and aim it down and kind of show you how I put these in. I'm going to go ahead and let these set up a little bit. I want to go get the rest of them put on there and then uh, I'll show you how we tap them in. All right, so I let these set up a little bit. They just got a little bit tacky. You can kind of tell when they start getting a darker color. I just grab it with two fingers kind of spread them out and I'll set them in here just try to set them in even it will stick to it a little bit with with the RTV on there then I get I just you can heck you can use a round socket of, you just want to, you always want to tap on the outside of this. Uh, you don't really want to tap on the inside. You got to keep that shape perfect. You want to tap on the outside. You can get a socket that's exactly the same size. I use these. These are just uh, race drivers. Um, actually, this is just a cheap set from Harbor Freight. They're very cheap. They come in all different sizes of this here. And then um, this is a smaller size. And I use this outside part here. It actually will fit just inside the beveled part of this block here, this freeze plug hole. You can see how it's all beveled on the outside. And obviously the freeze plug will sit inside on the flat section all the way around. So what you kind of want is you want something that will fit inside the bevel, but not pass inside the hole. And when you do that and you tap this in, you end up with the freeze plug being inside the bevel. You want it, you want it inside the bevel, all the way around. See that bevel on the one over there? And then you can see where this one is. So you basically want the outside of that freeze plug even with the flat part. It can even go in a little bit. You can see how much how, you can see how deep it is compared to the freeze plug. You want to compare that. Um, see the freeze plugs. These are not the thinnest ones. They have some that are really thin. Some of them are thick. This is just a standard size and they work out really well when you get them knocked in there. I'll just sit it on there even around it. Check it every now and then. Make sure it's going in even. And you can tell it hits the block right there. Once it hits the block, you know you're not going to go in anymore. But then I can tell it's a little bit further in on the bottom than it is on the top. So then I'm going to just kind of put this back on. I want to angle the bottom up so I'm only hitting on the top. Just a little bit, and then it levels right out. Maybe on if one side, like so, on this side, I can tell it's not quite flush. That feels pretty good. Just get a little brake clean, and then I just take it off. It's, it's good. Pull it up, it's going to come out. I try not to do too much because I don't want to take the paint off. Obviously the brake clean is going to take the paint off. If you're real picky about it, 
taking the paint off right around there you can just come back with a, a little tiny little paint brush spray a little bit of the engine enamel into the cup and just touch it up but honestly you're not going to really see that once the header's on and everything's you're not you're not going to see it but um, usually I do touch it up a little bit because I don't want any rust sitting in on the block so but let me see get a flashlight on it and just check yeah that's actually perfect just right around the yep so that's pretty much it right there um, I'm gonna go ahead and get these elements knocked in real quick and then I also just get some brake clean in between and I clean up the mess on here because if you don't it'll just get even worse on the block I just do that in between each one a dead blow hammer works really good too um, it just makes it for a lot quicker than a regular hammer you don't have to hit it that hard takes it right in. This is my brake clean deal. Instead of getting uh, cans of brake clean, they can get real expensive as you know. I buy this by, it's, a, it's liquid only. It comes in a five gallon jug and then you can buy these sprayers. I got this at AutoZone. Um, this is comes from their commercial division or you can get them online. They're pretty cheap and you basically unscrew the cap, you put you pour your brake clean in there, the, the liquid, put the cap on, there's, a, there's a, actually a seal on here, and then you hit it with some air, put some pressure in it, and it sprays out. It's a lot cheaper. The five gallon jug runs about $70, but it, it will last a long time. Um, it's half the price of buying brake clean in a can, let me tell you. to go. Got one more on this side to do. So you also have the one for the, the cam in the back. This is actually a lot larger. And that one I'm not going to be able to do right now because it's on the engine stand. So I just wait until the motor's completely done. I take it off the engine stand. I tap it in. Um, there's also some oil galley plugs in the back. I can actually get to two of them. They're actually low enough where I can get in here and they're screw-in style. They actually have threads on them, plugs. Um, put some th white thread sealer on there. I use the, uh, the Permatex or the Loctite white thread sealer and I screw them in. I can I'm going to go ahead and do the back ones. I should be able to get to those. Um, but then there is a small oil galley plug, a really tiny one that is tapped in. I'm going to do one. I'm going to do the front ones. I already did one. I'll have to wait and do that once I get it off the engine stand. I already got one in. These are a little bit of a, a little tricky, man. They're really tight going in. You really don't even need to put anything on them because they are, they are tight going in. But I go ahead and do it anyway. So I've already got this one in. And then after you put it in, you want to do a little, uh, just a little dimple there. It's always good too. These things go in so tight. Um, a lot of times nobody even does this, but I just like to do it to be a little safer. I just get a, a little punch right here and just kind of hit it on the corner right there, one right there. Sometimes, you know, some people do them in threes, one, two, three. Um, it just it just pushes a little nick out just to kind of keep it from blowing out. Because um, obviously it's, this is oil galley. You can have whatever 60, 80 pounds of oil pressure or even higher with some motors if you're kicking it. Um, and that's why these are tighter. They're, they're really hard to get in. 
just so they don't blow out. But if you do nick that a little bit, it will pretty much assure it's not going to come out. You don't need to do that on these, obviously, because you know your coolant when it pressures up. What do you got? Uh, 16 pounds, 18 pound radiator tap, and that's it. So while we're letting that sit up, I'll flip this over, install this one. This one is another old galley on the top here that feeds the lifters valley. So you just drop that one in. Try to do it squares, just like the other ones. And these, these go in pretty tight too, so you kind of want to make sure you're going in straight. Because once they go in crooked, they are a bitch to change or get back out, of course. You have, you have to get them out if they're too crooked, but uh, if you go in straight, you're good. If you go in crooked, sometimes it's hard to straighten them up. And that one, I'm going to just use a socket that fits the outside exactly. See, these are a little tighter going in. Just want to make sure it's all straight. Looks like it needs to go in a little more. And so, since I got to go a little bit more on this side, not much, I want to just concentrate on this side only. And that level it right out. And then you can go back to uh, putting it in the center. Get some of the old excess out. This one here is just a very, just a little bit smaller. It's almost the same size. I'm gonna see if I can't tap it in just a little bit below. Yeah, just like that. Perfect. It's like just below the surface. And then just get you a, a punch. Just kind of do it at an angle right here a little bit. Something like that. Yeah. Yep, that's good. You just put a little bit of a nick on it on either side, and that will kind of push just a little dimple of this metal out. And that will assure that it ain't going to come out. I should be able to get this one in, it should be ready. I just stick it on my pinky. It's so damn small. And then just kind of line it up. Make sure it's straight. And it's really nice. Another thing, when you put that uh, former gasket on there, it's so sticky it will actually hold it in place for you. Now this one, since it's so small, I usually just tap on it evenly with the hammer. To do it too hard and I'll come back clean off the excess here and then clean it off my hammer too so it gets on there I find that a 3 8 deep well works really good on getting it on in a little bit because it's just a little bit smaller just like the other one was up here so you try to get it on there evenly you can tap her on in. It's only going to go in so far because this socket's going to start hitting the block. Yep, there it is. Then I'll do the same thing on this one. Make sure it's in a little bit, which it is. And I want to just get this right here, put a little bit on it, a little angle. Just a little bit. That pretty much takes care of all the freeze plugs that have to be knocked in, except the, the one cam plug in the back. Um, and I have one old galley that has to be knocked in. The others are threaded. Actually, I'm wrong. All three of them are threaded. Cool. Thought they were. So I can only get to two of them. So I'll go ahead and thread them in. And then we have one that's threaded in here. I'll go ahead and get that in. 
pretty much all you need for that is your this is Permatex thread sealer it's a um, this is a high temperature thread sealer you guys have seen these around I'm sure um, it is kind of a Loctite too it will hold it in but uh, I use this on everything that needs to be sealed on threads so this one Let's just go to screw in here. The threads have already been cleaned up. That's another thing you may want to do. Um, chase the threads. Make sure they're good and clean, just like on the head bolts and everything. Uh, they've already been done, did all that already. I mean, these really don't have no specific torque to them. I'm sure, you know, you look them up, you probably see something. You don't want to tighten it so tight where it messes anything up. but. Just nice and snug. Hell, that's probably about 20 foot pounds is all. It ain't like it's gonna go anywhere. It's gonna be pretty tight, and then uh, the thread sealer is gonna also keep it from leaking. Obviously, before you do all this, you want to blow the the block out. You want to make sure that all the oil galleys are completely clean and blown out, which I do that when I get the block back um, from the machine shop. It's pretty, it's, it's spotless anyway. But um, since I went ahead and had to clearance the clearance the cylinder walls for the stroker crank, um, I washed the block completely out. I basically um, did it with water hose and uh, I just washed it out real good. If you do that, you blow it all out, you pretty much have to go back and re oil everything immediately because you'll start surface rusting. Um, so what I on this block what I did was it was already so clean I didn't I, I covered up um, all the you know bearing holes and stuff when I clearanced it and with tape and I blew it off and then I took the tape off and I basically cleaned it with brake clean since I have this you know this cleaner and this jug I told you about it works freaking great man you put some pressure to it and I was able to get in there and just just clean it all with brake clean, um, just just like a water hose. And once I got everything cleaned out, I sprayed through all the the journals, bearing journals, water everywhere, and then I just blew it all out with air, and everything was perfectly clean. And then after that, I started oiling down the cylinder walls. I I basically oiled down everything that wasn't going to be painted. And then before I painted the block, um, I basically, because the block sat, you know, for a couple of days or whatever before I painted it. So what I ended up doing was I went with brake clean and wiped all this down and I had oil, not inside here, but on the top. And then I, I taped all this off. Um, I did use, I've got rolls of um, paper that the uh, body shops use. So, you know, I basically taped it all off and put the oil pan on and, uh, I went ahead and sprayed the block one more time everywhere with brake clean, blew it off with air, and painted it. And it just comes out really nice that way. That way you don't get any paint lifting from, you know, from any type of oil or anything on the block. I've seen so many guys go through all the work to clean their blocks and paint them, you know, and then within, you know, a week or two, paint starts bubbling and lifting and even though they've cleaned them and what it is is they just you have oil and residue on them and once that heat sets in and it, it that paint will start coming off and you, it's like painting body you know you might as well spend the extra time to make sure it's all good and clean and everything's taped properly before you paint it so the paint will last a long time on the block and I'm going to just wait. I'm not going to do this one down here. I want to just wait until I get it off the block or get it off the engine stand to do it. But, yeah, I mean, uh, that's pretty much it, man. I got, I got all the freeze plugs in. All the ones that I need in right now, anyway. Oil galley plugs. Looks good against the, the blue. Yeah, and I also taped this up real nice, too. Didn't get no paint in there. So... Now, um, I know this video is going to be kind of already going too long, so I'm going to cut it off there. I'm going to start assembling 
I'm going to put the crank in, get the main cap on, uh, main cap support, torque it all down. I may do that on a, another video. This is going to do it for now. Uh, appreciate you all checking in, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. And don't forget, go ahead and hit that like button. Um, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, share the videos. We're going to try to keep doing some you know, tech tips like this. It might uh, help you guys out. I'm sure it's not new to a lot of people. It's just common stuff that, you know, it's basically just, you can do this with any motor. But, uh, you know, kind of helps out with some of the guys that might be getting started or, or not 100% um, you know, comfortable doing freeze plugs. But, uh, yeah, it's all good. Uh, appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next one.